from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving. Yeah. I hope no one was fighting and arguing. Everybody, you know, you ate good food and you had leftovers and stuff for today. Yeah. Well, I had a nice Thanksgiving. We had um, cashew cheese for appetizer. Just me and my husband. Cashew cheese on crackers and then we fried some shrimp, made some mashed potatoes and um, what else? Collard greens and um, Collard greens and cabbage, I like the mixture. And that was it. Nobody has time for cranberry sauce. And I don't like pie. <laughs> Plus, it's so cold here in New York. You know, yesterday was the coldest Thanksgiving ever since 1901, the newscaster said. Yes, freezing. So anywho, what did you watch? Are you watching football and all that stuff? Or did you? I was all caught up. I, no, I didn't watch the parade. I, I've watched it before. Watch, 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 watch. <laughs> um, I got caught up in the Clinton Affair documentary. Oh, clap if you're caught up. Really? Okay. It's, uh, it's uh, it, parts two and three were already air aired earlier this week. Monica spoke about her famous blue dress. I want you to take a look and listen very carefully. We m moved to the bathroom and were more intimate. There was some attention paid on me and then I was reciprocating. So that finished. And then I hugged him after, and he hugged me, and off I went. I didn't notice that the dress was soiled. Betty saw me as I left. I went to dinner that night. None of these people said to me, hey, you gotta go in the bathroom, you've got stuff all over your dress. I like the way how she describes oral sex and whatnot. So, okay, first of all, this is really interesting. I mean, she's really caught up with him. Remember, in this documentary, we learned that they've been involved with each other for two years, and she loved him, loved him. He abused his power. She, at 22, as far as I'm concerned, you know, a home wrecker, but uh, okay. We learned in the documentary so far that, that Clinton's secretary, Betty, was in on everything. Oh. oh yes, we didn't know this. Betty would help sneak them around, call Monica up and say he wants to see you. Betty would be in a room connected to the room so that while the two of them are pleasuring each other or talking about their day, because remember, it wasn't all about sex. We learned this in the documentary. Sometimes Monica would be there and they would discuss their day. like. She's an intern and he's running the world. What, what's to discuss? So, but Betty, Betty was the one who would keep the secret. 
nobody knew. Um, what else did I learn? First of all, I thought the stain was gonna be bigger. <laughs> you know, like, and it was so low. To me, it was probably, he hadn't pulled up his pants and he hit her with a wet tip. I'm surprised to hear how uh, Monica confided in Linda Tripp. Linda Tripp, by the way, looks fantastic. This is what she used to look like. And before we play the clip, remember John Goodman, this is what she looks like now. John Goodman used to play her on SNL. So as you know, Monica 22, Linda, I don't know it's her exact position there at the White House, but she was there, an older woman, and um, not married, uh, probably just wanting to be in the mix of something, and Monica just threw it in her lap. Okay, she confided in Linda Tripp, take a look. She essentially accosted me coming into the Pentagon and pulled me into the cafeteria and blurted it out. She said, I've been involved in an affair for a long time. I had to leave the White House. Um, until after the election, it was too dangerous for me to stay. She essentially started walking through everything that had ever happened, and she had a photographic memory. I mean, this is pretty fascinating stuff. Oh, I was fascinated, completely fascinated, and horrified at the same time. Horrifying, that's a good one. Now, if you are Linda Tripp and this information falls in your lap, what do you do? If I were her, I would have done exactly what she did. You'd be the sneaky older friend, because at this point, at this point, you know, she's got nothing going on in her life but her job, and maybe she's saving it to write books and you know come out and tell the story and, and things like that. It's juicy. But at 22, you're old enough to know. Don't blurt things out. Don't... <sighs> what a mess. Uh, there was a lot of football on TV yesterday, I don't care. <laughs> but, um, but over 50,000 people now have signed that petition urging Maroon 5 to drop out of the Super Bowl halftime show, which is in February. Okay, they accepted the gig after Rihanna turned it down to support her friend Colin Kaepernick, who took the knee. Then a petition, I mean, then Amy Schumer got involved and said something on her social media, you know, wouldn't it be great, something that, to that effect, if Maroon 5 dropped out. The petition gained momentum, and now um, what it is, is um, the artists want all artists not to work with the NFL until the NFL can support all the rights of players. It's all too much. I, you know, this discussion was very heated in our um, Hot Topics meeting, because my opinion is, I'm dropping out. First of all, um, Adam Levine, you're bigger now than Maroon 5. You've got so much going on, it's too risky. What if you, what? <laughs> like, what if you perform, at, I mean, the voice, the music, your looks, yeah. Um, what, if they, what if they perform and people protest them and never buy their music again? Or a record sales flop? It's too risky, too risky. And then the black guy, <laughs> uh, they might give it to you harder because you're black and not supporting Take a Knee. I, I wouldn't do it, Maroon 5, and if I were any artist, I wouldn't do it, and you know what? That's what I said. There are people in our morning meeting that said, hey, they should do it. You know, it's a chance to perform in front of, you know, 50,000 people, plus TV, you know, millions, millions, millions. The biggest event ever. I'll tell you what, he already did the pregame show at the Super Bowl. So he had, he had his time. But this, the, taking the big stage, nah. And J Justin Timberlake performed last year, but, you know what? His new album tanked. Aww. And all people could say 
is why does he get to perform and get acceptance back in the Super Bowl in the name of Janet Jackson? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all so weird. If I were an artist, I just, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I wouldn't do it. However, clap if you would do it anyway. Okay, okay. Here's the only thing that I'm thinking of that might save oh, Maroon 5 if they perform. Oof. All right, it's in Atlanta. I don't know that all the Atlanta art artists are protesting, but apparently they're artists, so if you show up, then people are gonna you know, throw rocks at you too. The only one that could bring everyone together without thinking of the knee is Little John. I'm saying. People are gonna get so caught. Everybody knows Little John music, get low. And snap your fingers, do the dance, and turn down for what? I mean, and those are just three of the giant hits. He's so likable by everybody. He would fit in perfect at the Super Bowl, I think, and I don't think that we would hate on him afterwards. I, I'm not sure, I don't think. But you know what? Country, how about nobody perform um, that's already on the bill, uh, Maroon 5. A little John, maybe you, you stay and perform with Go Country Western. <laughs> people love the Country Western music. The Super Bowl is watched by everybody, but you know, the Country Western people are really eyeballing that TV. And I say, you call my friends the Oak Ridge Boys. Yeah. You call, call Dolly Parton because she's just, just admitted that after being married for 50 something years to Carl, she enjoys spending time away from him. That's how the marriage stays together. So Dolly Part you call Dolly Parton and you call Florida Georgia Line. Yeah. And make sure you have little John there too. And I'm, st I'm still not watching. I, I'm not watching. I, I don't know. February 3rd, February 3rd, Super Bowl. Uh, alas, why are we always talking about the V card here? So the new Bachelor promo is here. And I want you to pay attention. They're really exploiting this guy, you know, 26 year old Colin, Colton. <laughs> so he's 26, he's a uh, virgin. Uh, the tagline is, <laughs> what does he have to lose? <laughs> Here's the trailer, take a look. A virgin, but that's just a small part of who I am. Too fast, too sweet. I'm here to fall in love, so hopefully by the end of this, I'm down on one knee. You could lose your virginity this week. Sexual intimacy is a big part of any relationship. Could Colton lose his virginity in Singapore? Maybe. He was shaking because you scared him so bad, and you're gonna ruin potential relationships. I have no doubt in my mind that you talked mad about me. I'm on my own business. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm done. Colton! Oh my God! What just happened? I am so turned off. That thing being 26, whether you're a man or you're a woman and being a virgin, it's so unattractive. Nobody wants the baggage. We have to teach you stuff. You know, and, and by the way, and if he does lose his V card on TV, that's even worse. And I don't want the whole season dragged out talking about his virginity. Although it is fascinating. And I have no idea why he jumped the fence. <laughs> girls rubbing up on you, you're in the hot tub. You're in the shower splashing around with girls. You used to play professional football. Get out of here with that. <laughs> All right. 
cycle 23 of The Bachelor premieres on Monday, January 7th on ABC. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Alas, there's so much going on in the world of pop culture and here to break it down, oh, we've got the hot five, by the way. Oh, yeah. Hit it. Parsons is back. Jeremy. Woo, so yeah. Good to see you. yeah. Thanks for having me. Are you shopping? I'm, I, I'm shopping. A little, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'm getting out there. But we do everything online. So does that count? No. Okay. I mean, that, that's still shopping. Yeah. I'm not going out and standing in lines. Mm -mm. No. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to be so disappointing. No, it's okay. All no, because right. I'm, I'm not shopping. Okay. For anyone. But, oh, you're just not going to do it at all? No, no I'm done. Over it. Don't No, because I give all year. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Generosity all year round, all year. everybody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's on the um, what's on the number five on the hot list? Number five is the movie Green Book. So you're gonna hear a lot more about this movie. It stars Oscar winner Mahershala Ali. You probably know him from Moonlight, Hidden Figures, won the Oscar. He's, I mean, a huge star and so great. Also, uh, Viggo Mortensen co-stars in this. A true story based in the 1960s. So Mahershala plays this world-class pianist. He's doing this U.S. tour. Mm. Viggo plays this uh, like bouncer from the Bronx type character. They hire him to drive him around the South, the Deep South, and also be his bodyguard because things, obviously, during segregation, very difficult and challenging for him. Let me give you a little bit about the time. Title. The uh, Green Book refers to this book that was uh, provided black travelers information about safe places uh -huh. to stay, to eat, and to shop in isn't, the Deep South isn't that interesting? during the se segregation period. So you hear this and you think, like, wow, racism, civil rights, probably a Is heavy Vigo movie. Is Vigo racist? Vigo, they end up having this buddy like relationship. So that's part of the arc of the story. Mm. It's more like a buddy road trip comedy, if you can believe that. And it, Peter Fairley is, one, is the director. He's responsible for like uh, Dumb and Dumber, Something About Mary. Okay. So it's, it's a weird twist in tone, but there's Oscar buzz for this. This is definitely one you're gonna hear a ton about. Hmm. Check it out, uh, Green Book. It is available, you can watch okay. it now. What's number four? Number four is A Legendary Christmas with John and Chrissy. I am so excited, look. Thanksgiving's over. We are now moving headstrong into the ramp up for Christmas. We got the Rockefeller Christmas tree ceremony that's on TV on mm. Wednesday. Right after that is John Legend and Chrissy Teigen's Christmas special. Is their daughter in it? There, there, it has to be, right? They have to have a little baby Luna in there, right? Of course. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But, but I'll tell you who else. John's performing with some legends like Stevie Wonder, oh. doing some songs off his legendary Christmas album. Stevie Wonder and him did a song together. Uh, also some others, including Kim K and Kris Jenner. Some of their friends are going to be stopping by, adding whatever they add to it. I'm sure it'll be fun. Sounds fun. And interesting. It does. John is going to be a coach on The Voice this next season. I don't know if you're aware of that. So his fellow voice coaches are going to be a part of this. We might get a little sneak peek into their chemistry and how they kind of act together, how he's going to vibe with them. Right, right. It wouldn't be a good show without some comedy. We've got Keenan Thompson as well as Jane Lynch and Retta also a part yay, of this. Yay, yay. I'm that, really excited for it. That sounds good. I it think, does. honestly, I think it's going to get huge ratings. People are going to turn up for that. It sounds good. Okay, what's number three, Jeremy? All right, number three is called Dirty John. Whoa. Have you heard of this? No. I got There's some producers I work with at People that are crazy about this. It's based on a true story that became the successful podcast. Now it's going to be this eight-episode limited series on Bravo. It stars Connie Britton and Eric Bana. So here's the deal. This wealthy, single, older woman in Orange County, California, decides to get into online dating. I'm in. Okay, you're already in. She, she finds what she thinks is Prince Charming, this wealthy doctor, he's charismatic, all that, but her daughters aren't having it. They don't believe his story, they do some digging. Guess what, he's not who he claims to be. Wow. Con man, it gets violent and kind of crazy. There's some twists and turns in this, and don't forget, based on a true story, I even have a clip to give you a little taste. Yes! Watch. There's something wrong with him. If he's really a bad guy, mom will see it. My girls have not given him a single chance. You deserve to put yourself first. What is all the stuff doing here? Stop talking to your mom like that. I stood up for you. John is not a perfect person. Sometimes I go a little crazy. You don't know this man at all. So, there you go. Honey. Dirty John, Sunday, 10 p.m. on Bravo. It all kicks off. This is going to be one to binge watch for sure. Okay. Number two. Number two is Mariah Carey's new album, Caution. 
It's her 15th album in about four years. Great reviews. So, some of my closest friends that are fans are going nuts about this. It's kind of got this 2018, like, fresh vibe, but also the signature Mariah vibe that we all know and love. Yeah. She's owning the throwback sensibility to the point where there's actually a cassette version of this available. Fabulous. Well, I don't know if you're going to have a place to play it or uh, if half the people even know what a cassette is anymore. My house. But you can get it. Oh, you have a cassette player? OK, all right. <laughs> Excuse me. So <laughs> you can check that out. Look, Mariah's had this tough couple years. Obviously, the split with James Packer, uh, the split with her manager, Stella. You've covered all that very extensively. And, and also, she revealed in a People exclusive about struggling with bipolar. She's gone through so much, coming out strong. She's got a tour that she's kicking off in February, 22 cities around the U.S. Mm -hmm. You can get tickets for that now. And uh, also, when it comes to just looking at her fans rallying around her, here's my favorite thing. Glitter. We remember Glitter from yes. 2001. The movie, the soundtrack kind of bombed. Well, her fans, the Lambs, started this online campaign called Justice for Glitter. It went to number one on iTunes 17 years later this past week. So you can get glitter, you can get caution, available now. All right. There we go. Drum roll, please. What is number one? Jeremy? Number one is Michelle Obama's memoir, Becoming. First ladies, first ladies often do the memoirs. This is something that, but this one has had so much anticipation, been out for a couple weeks, the buzz continues to grow about this. Very juicy. Over 725,000 copies were sold on opening day. So that tells you how huge it is. Yeah. She's everywhere right now, Michelle Obama, on the cover of so many magazines, including People. We had the first exclusive excerpt from the book to give you kind of an idea of how open she was going to be mm -hmm. growing up, her childhood in the South Side of Chicago, how her relationship with Barack Obama first kind of started developing, and even the struggles they've been through doing couples therapy. She wants to be an example for young couples like, hey, if it's not all rosy all the time, you can do that. Don't be ashamed to do that. Also opened up about having a miscarriage and uh, having uh, Malia and, and Sasha through um, IVF. So yeah. very personal. And she was feeling very alone at that time. Yeah, she was. So it, it's a super intimate look at her and all that she's gone through. And she throws a little shade at Trump because, of course, right? Uh, so um, probably going to be the best-selling book of 2018. You can check that out. Becoming okay. Michelle Obama. It's available right now. Thank you, Jeremy Parsons. Thank you. Pick up your copy of People Magazine. It's on newsstands now. More great show. Up next, everybody, from the hit show, Younger, Nico Tortorella is here. So grab a snack and come on back.